Hi, this is David Harper of Bonnet Turtle and a brief illustration of a credit spread option which is a different instrument than the credit default swap which I've lately been illustrating. To understand the credit spread option we need a definition of credit spread and that is the difference between a risky yield and a risk free or riskless yield. So that could be, for example, the yield or yield to maturity on a corporate bond which is risky minus the yield or yield to maturity on a US Treasury which is risk free or riskless virtually so that's the credit spread that's going to be built into the credit spread option and if we just assume that the US Treasury yield is constant at five percent that could be for a five-year Treasury bond and if the corporate yield is six percent then we have a credit spread of 1%. That's because 6% minus 5 is 1%. Now let's assume a widening of the credit spread. So that means the credit spread could in or the corporate yield could increase to 8%. And if the risk-free yield is still 5%, then our new credit spread is 3%. 8 minus 5 is 3%. This is a widening of the credit spread. Then if the corporate yield drops down back down to say 5.5% and the treasury yield is still 5%, our credit spread is now one half of 1% or 50 basis points. And in this case we could say the credit spread has narrowed. So for the credit spread option, the instrument is going to have a strike spread. So that's typically going to be fixed at the time of purchase of the option. It's built into the instrument. And then the actual credit spread will vary over the life or tenor of the credit spread option. And so we can look first at the credit spread put because credit spread options can be either puts or calls and the terminology is confusing here I think the payoff for the credit spread put is given by the product of three things the duration on the bond the notional and the this maximum function which is just the difference between the credit spread that's the actual spread and that strike spread and the reason it's a maximum function is it's only going to be there's only going to be a payoff here if there if this spread is in the money and so the buyer of a put option benefits from a widening of the credit spread you can see here the credit spread needs to increase for the buyer of the put to profit so if here is the investor who may own the reference obligation the risky bond this investor may purchase the credit spread put that means he or she is going to be paying the put premium. That's the upfront put premium, similar to buying a, a stock option on an equity. The, the buyer pays up front, that's guaranteed, that money is out of pocket. If the credit spread drops, if we look down here, the credit spread drops below the strike spread, we've got a zero here and there's no payoff on the put, on the credit spread put in which case there's no payoff coming back to the investor and this is all that happens the investor is out of money the upfront premium but of course the investor purchased that put premium on the possibility that the credit spread may increase in which case we would have a positive value here and the investor will receive a payoff so ultimately their net profit is the payoff minus their put premium not adjusted for time value of money so for the credit spread call, it's just the opposite and just as confusing in my opinion. That for the buyer of the credit spread call, if we think about the investor, they're paying a premium and they are going to profit. The buyer of the credit spread call will profit if there is a narrowing of the credit spread. We can see down here the payoff is duration multiplied by notional multiplied by the this difference if it's in the money strike minus the credit spread so really these two terms have been switched so 
it's a reduction or narrowing of the credit spread that creates a profit for the buyer of the call. And again, it's asymmetric. This investor, whether it's a purchase of the buy, of the call or the put, is needs to make an upfront payment. That's the guaranteed part. The the payoff part coming back to the investor is the contingent part and depends. So finally, just to illustrate with one final example, let's just assume that we're they're a buyer of a credit spread option is looking at a current situation illustrated right here. The treasury yield, that's the risk list yield is 5% and the bond yield is 6% so there's a current credit spread of 1% and the investor thinks that there's going to be a widening of the credit spread. They're betting that this corporate yield is going to increase as the treasury yield uh, is stable. And of course the treasury yield doesn't need to be st stable. It's only the difference between these two that the buyer of the credit spread options betting will go up. Okay, so in this case, this investor wants to purchase a credit spread put because the credit spread put will profit from a widening of the spread. So let's say they purchase a credit spread put with a strike spread of 2%. That means the payoff is going to be duration times notional times the difference between the credit spread and the strike spread. Okay, at the time of the purchase, credit spread of 1% minus strike spread of 2% is negative 1%. At the time of the purchase, this option is out of the money, as, as they oftentimes are. Okay, but over time, over that life or tenor of that put, let's assume the investor is right, the spread widens, and this corporate yield goes to 8 minus 5, and such that before expiration the new credit spread is 3%. Well, I'm just going to make up some numbers here. Say the duration on the bond is 4. Let's say the notional is 1 million. Our investor now has a credit spread of 3% minus the strike spread of 2% because that never changed but now this put this credit spread put option is in the money and so the payoff to this credit spread put buyer is going to be 4 million multiplied by 1% and of course if the on the other hand if this yield had let's just say this corporate yield even stayed the same at 6% then the credit spread would have been 1% and given that the strike spread was 2%, this option would have never uh, moved out of the money and there would be no payoff to the investor. So that's an illustration of the credit spread put. This is David Harper of the Bonnock Turtle. Thanks for your time.